Once upon a time, there lived a very rich man. He had three daughters. Two of them were really greedy and self-centered girls, but the third one had a heart full of love and kindness. One day, their dad received the news that his ships had sunk due to the storm. Poor man had lost everything and was left with only his little house in the village. The two greedy sisters were, of course, not pleased with this situation. All day long, all they were doing was sitting around and complaining. All the housework was left to Beauty. After a while, their father heard that one of his lost ships had made it to the harbour. He started to prepare to go to the harbour right away. And before he left, he asked his daughters. What should I bring you when I get back, girls? Dress, shoes, necklace and bracelets. And what about you, Beauty? What do you want? Just the roses fine, Daddy. Their father arrived at the harbour after a long journey, but neither his stuff on the boat was there, nor was the ship usable. Sad and tired, he started his journey back home. It was almost dark when he reached the forest. The forest was dark and cold, and it was snowing. He rode his horse for hours and hours on the snow. And finally, he saw a castle with the lights on. He entered, hoping maybe they might help him. It was a weird castle. The lights were on everywhere. The dinner table was full of food. And there was fire in the chimney. But there was no one to be seen. He called out for someone, but no one answered. Finally, not being able to wait anymore, he first ate some food from the table, and then he slept in one of the beds. When he woke up in the morning, he found some new clothes next to the bed. He went downstairs, a nice breakfast was waiting for him on the table. This castle should belong to a fairy, or she wouldn't help me like this. I wish I could thank her. When he was leaving the castle, he noticed the rose garden. I could not grant my other daughter's wishes. At least I can make Beauty's wish happen, he thought to himself. Just as he picked a rose, he and his surroundings shook with a loud roar. An evil looking lying like beast appeared from behind the trees. The father almost fainted when he saw the beast. I saved your life. I fed you. I gave you new clothes. And here you are, stealing my roses. Is this how you thank me? The man went on his knees and begged him. Said that he wanted to take one of the roses to his daughter. What you did will not go unpunished. Please forgive me. I will forgive you with only one condition. Talk to your daughters. If one of them agrees to live here with me, I will grant your life. The man jumped on his horse and sadly head home. When at home, the two greedy sisters listened to the horrific story their dad went through, but did not even hear the beast's proposal. But Beauty did not behave like her sisters. Daddy, if you allow me, I accept to go next to the beast. The two sisters immediately accepted her proposal because they thought that everything that happened 
was her fault. Sad and hopeless, her father took Beauty and head to the castle. When they arrived, everything was like before. The food was on the table and there was no one around. Just as they sat down and started to eat, the beast came out. Beauty started to shake out of fear. Because the beast was as scary as her father had told her, Beast asked with a soft voice. Did you come here with your own will? Um, yes. Then in the morning, your father will go away and never come back. When she woke up in the morning, Beauty knew that her father was gone and she found a nice breakfast waiting for her on the table. She wandered around in the garden for a while. She felt sad when she looked at the roses. Then she went around in the castle. One of the doors was full of roses. She wondered. She opened the door and peeked inside. The room was decorated just like she would have liked and it was full of books, flowers and musical instruments. She thought that someone who can arrange a room like this would not hurt anybody. Then she took a book. On the book was written in gold letters, My dear Queen, your wish is my command. I wish I could see my father now. As soon as Beauty said it, her father appeared in the mirror across the room. Beauty was so surprised seeing her father made her happy again. That night at dinner, Beast appeared again. Would you let me watch you, Beauty? You own the place. Why would you ask me? No. You own this castle now. If you want, I can leave immediately. Beauty was very surprised with his answer. I want to ask you something. Do you think I'm really ugly? At first she did not know what to say. Then she lifted her head to look at Beast and nodded as to say yes. Well, would you marry me then? This time Beauty answered harshly. No! Beast turned around sad and left Beauty alone. Beast was visiting Beauty every night at dinner and he treated her very kind. As the days passed, Beauty felt like she was getting used to Beast. I wish he wasn't that ugly. A couple months passed. Beauty was no longer scared of Beast. She even started to like him. But one day, she saw in the mirror that her father was ill. She raced next to Beast and asked him to let her go home, because she wanted to take care of her sick father. Of course, you can go. But if you don't come back, I might die from sadness. I will come back after a week, I promise. Beast gave Beauty a ring. When she would put this ring on her nightstand and fall asleep, she would wake up back in the castle. The next morning, she woke up in her own bed in her father's house. She ran to her father at once. When her father saw her, he was so happy that he felt better. In the afternoon, Beauty's sisters, who recently had gotten married, came to visit their father. When they found Beauty at home, they were furious with envy and anger. And they decided to play a little trick on her. Let's make her stay here one more week. Then the beast will come and kill her. The two sisters came next to Beauty crying and told her that they didn't want to be apart. 
Beauty promised to stay one more week. Not long after, Beauty realised that she missed Beast. One day she saw a dream where Beast was lifeless on the ground in the castle's garden. She woke up in a sweat. What I'm doing is cruel and selfish. So she immediately took the ring off her finger, put it on the nightstand beside her, and she woke up in the Beast's castle in the morning. She waited for the Beast all day long, but he was nowhere to be seen. She waited for hours and hours, but Beast did not come. Suddenly, she went running into the garden. Beast was lying down lifeless on the ground, just like she saw in her dream. Beauty ran next to him and hugged him. Beast's heart was still beating. He rarely opened his eyes and spoke with difficulty. I thought you weren't coming back. I stopped eating and prepared to die. But I love you and I want to marry you. At that instant, something magical happened. Suddenly the castle became brighter and more beautiful. Beauty looked around stunned and then she turned her head back to the beast. But where the ugly beast was lying, now there was a young and handsome prince. When she saw him, Beauty started to cry. Who are you? And where did the beast go? Prince stood up and started to tell. I am the beast. An evil witch put a spell on me. She turned me into an ugly beast. If you hadn't said that you wanted to marry me, I would have had to live my life as a beast forever. When she heard this, Beauty was much happier. With her good heart, she found true love. Beauty and the Prince got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a brother and sister named Hansel and Gretel. Their mother had passed away when they were babies. They lived with their dad in a hut in the forest. Their dad was trying to earn their living by working as a woodcutter and was looking after the kids at the same time. A couple of years passed and struggling to juggle work and two kids at the same time, their dad decided to get married again. The woodcutter's wife was from a wealthy family and she hated the fact that they were poor and she had to live in a small ruined hut deep into the forest. Plus, she did not like her stepchildren at all. On a cold winter night, as they were getting ready for bed, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother talking to their dad. How are you going to get through this winter? We don't have enough food. If you do not get rid of these kids, we will all starve to death. Their dad opposed furiously. No need to argue. I made up my mind. Tomorrow we'll take them to the woods and leave them there. Hearing all that, Gretel started to cry. <laughs> her brother Hansel comforted her. Please don't worry, Gretel. Somehow we'll find our way back home. Later that night, Hansel snuck out and collected as many pebbles as he could in his pockets. In the morning, they all started to walk towards the forest. Their father told them that they were going for a family hike. As they were walking, without anyone noticing, Hansel dropped the pebbles to mark the way back. In the afternoon, their dad and stepmother lit a fire and told them that they will be back soon. They walked off and vanished in the woods. Of course, they did not come back.
When the night fell, the horrible sounds of all the wild animals in the forest started to echo around them. Shivering with the horrifying sounds of the wolves, Hansel and Gretel did not leave the fireside until the moonrise. Then they started to follow the pebbles shining in the moonlight and walk towards home. Well done, Hansel. This was very clever of you. When the kids came back home, their dad was very happy and surprised at the same time. Their stepmother also acted as if she was happy, but deep inside, her decision was still the same. She was very upset that they were back. After three days, the stepmother tried to get rid of them again. This time at night, she locked Hansel and Gretel's door and did not allow Hansel to collect pebbles again. But Hansel was a clever boy. When they were walking to the forest in the morning, this time he dropped the breadcrumbs that he had put in his pocket the night before and again made a trail all the way back home. Around noon, their father and stepmother made up an excuse and went off, leaving them all alone in the forest again. Realising that they were not coming back, Hansel and Gretel wanted to start walking back home before it got dark. But this time, they could not find the trail they left because all the breadcrumbs were eaten by the birds. Gretel started crying. For the first time, Hansel also felt hopeless. This time the kids were really lost. With no food and scared to death, they wandered around the forest for three days. On the third day, they saw a bird, wide as snow. The bird chirped songs with its beautiful voice for them. They forgot their hunger for a moment and started to follow the bird. The bird brought them in front of a funny looking house. This house had walls of bread, a roof made out of cake and windows of candy and was covered with colourful cream all around. Hansel and Gretel could not believe their eyes. The house looked incredibly delicious. The kids forgot all about how tired they were and started to run to the house. Just as they were both going to have a bite from the house, they heard a voice from inside. Oh! Now who is nibbling on my house? They looked around and they saw a cute and sweet old lady at the door. When they told her all about what had happened to them, she felt very bad for them and so she let them in. The inside of the house was very different from the outside. It was dark, scary and it didn't feel right. But because they were so tired and hungry, the kids did not care much. The old lady brought all kinds of food and desserts for them and the kids ate food that they hadn't had before. That night, they slept on the softest bed they had ever seen. When they woke up in the morning, the old lady wasn't there. They started to look around. At the end of the corridor, they saw a small door. When they opened the door, they found cases full of gold and treasure inside. They were very surprised, of course. Hansel wanted to get in and take a closer look. Right at that moment, they heard her voice again. And what do you think you are doing? When they turned around, the kids faced the witch standing right there in front of them. Apparently, the old lady was a witch leading the kids to a dungeon with a house covered with cake and candy. The kids tried to run away, but the door was locked. The witch pulled Hansel by the hair and locked him in a cage. Then she dragged Gretel to the kitchen. Your brother is too skinny. Cook some food for him and make him fat. When he is in good shape, 
He'll be a delicious meal for me. But don't you dare eat anything. All the food is only for him. Having no choice, Gretel did what she asked for. Fortunately, Hansel was a clever and wise boy. He decided to trick the evil-hearted witch. Every night when the witch was asleep, he was digging a hole in the ground of the cage. The witch was controlling Hansel every morning to see if he gained weight or not. But Hansel wasn't eating anything his sister cooked. Instead, he was burying them in the hole that he digged. In the meantime, the witch was telling Gretel to cook more. This went on for days until finally the witch had enough. Fat skinny! I don't care anymore! Today I will make Hansel pie! She turned to Gretel. Look in the oven to see if the dough is baked enough. Although she was in fear, Gretel was also a wise girl just like her brother. She understood that the witch was going to push her in the oven. I can't get my head in there and see the dough whined Gretel. The witch pushed her aside and stuck her head inside. Gretel gathered all her strength and pushed the old witch into the oven and closed the oven door. <coughs> Gretel knew where the witch was hiding the keys. She ran straight away and saved Hansel from the cage. The flames from the oven covered the whole house. Hansel and Gretel ran away from the burning house into the woods. But they did not know where to go. A while later, they came across a river. A giant swan took them one by one to the other side of the river. The kids looked around and suddenly they realised where they were. They ran home as fast as they could. Seeing his kids, father was full of joy. With tears of joy, he explained to them how their stepmother had gone back to her parents' house soon after they had left them in the forest. And how sorry he was for all that he did and no matter how hard he had searched for them, they were nowhere to be found. The kids loved their father very much so they forgave him. But another surprise was waiting for their father. They both reached their pockets and brought out gold and diamonds they had found in the witch's home. Their father could not believe his eyes. All the problems that their family had ever had went away and they lived happily ever after.